What's up everybody, Asley here with another touch designer tutorial. In this one, I wanted to talk about two of my favorite post-render tricks to kind of give uh, a cool look to uh, just about anything. This works best, in my opinion, with a kind of subtle black and white stuff that has lots of different shades of gray. So that's what we're going to set up. Uh, the method we're looking at is really just how to use RGBA delay and some bloom to get some cool uh, generative colors rather than um, doing some of the more conventional methods for getting uh, a little bit of color in our touch designer animation. So starting with this uh, new project, I'm just going to clear everything out. And we're going to start with some noise. I'm going to change the resolution to something larger. Uh, you probably don't need to go full 4K. Let's do 1920, that's fine. And then I'm going to animate it with the usual ebbs time dot seconds. Uh, and then we'll, we'll do maybe times 0.2. Seems good. All right, let's uh, take this out to a null, and then let's make that our background. Uh, let's adjust this noise a little bit, just because I think this is going to look a little... Yeah, something like, something like that. All right. So we have lots of different shades of gray happening here, which is exactly what we want. What happens when we throw an RGBA delay in after something that's monochrome like this, uh, it creates some really, uh, some really pretty colors as the different channels overlap one another. So I'm going to open the palette browser. If you don't have this open by default, you can go to the dialogues menu up here, choose palette browser, or if you're on Mac, it's alt L, not sure what it is on windows. Um, and then, uh, select image filters from your uh, menu here. And then once you're in there, go down to RGBA delay, drag it into your project. And, uh, like I said, we're going to talk about bloom as well. So let's just go ahead and grab that. We won't, uh, wire it up yet, but we are going to use the RGBA delay. All right, so we need to drag uh, from our output on our noise into our RGBA delay, and then let's chain it up so we can see the full effect in the background. And uh, that's that's really it. That's kind of the magic right there. Um, this is what has given a lot of uh, my past tutorials and different looks that I've posted on Instagram or for client projects. This is what gives it the look. Uh, you just add in this delay of your red, green, and blue channels, and when you have lots of shades of gray, they overlap to create these kind of oranges, blues, golds. Um, I'm not sure what you would call it, but I, I really enjoy the way that these colors happen. And you can, uh, if you have any black and white uh, video, you can get some interesting things. Obviously, the closer to just only black and white you go, the harsher your red, green, and blue channels are going to get. So you start to get this kind of classic digital glitch sort of look, um, which is which is cool. But uh, I like these more subtle in-between areas that you can find. Um, and of course, in the RGBA delay tool, you can uh, mess with how much each channel is delayed and get different looks that way. I find shorter delays, you get more subtle appearances. Um, one thing to be wary of when you're using this, uh, it's going to look different running at, if you have a very busy network and you're not getting full 60 frames per second, if you're running real time, it's going to compensate and you're going to get different looks because it's, it's delaying, but it's not delaying the same amount it would be at 60 frames per second because it's forcing it to run real time. So if you find a look, uh, 
for instance, that looks really good when it's running at like 20 frames per second, that's not actually going to uh, turn out that way when you, when you render the video. So easiest way to fix that to make sure that what you're seeing is going to be what shows up when you render is to turn off real time. And uh, that should be what you get. It looks like it's actually going faster than real time on this since it was running at 60 frames per second. Um, it's a little strange, but uh, yeah. But if you're running at sub 60, if you're uh, and, and you want to make sure you're seeing an accurate representation of what it's going to look like, even though it will be slower, uh, it, it, it'll calculate the frames the same way it'll render them. So if you turn off real time, you'll see it the way it's going to look anyway do that if it's if it's running sub 60 turn off real time then adjust your delays so you can get a more accurate look um, i'm gonna sorry just tweaking these here i'll uh, put these i kind of like that those are those are good numbers or maybe even you know let's just put it back at the default uh, which was negative 5, negative 10, and negative 15. Yeah, that looks good. All right, cool. So just to sew this up, um, I'm going to add this bloom in here as well. Um, before we wire that up, a few things I need to do. The bloom is going to take away our uh, black background, so I need to throw in an RGB key. And then we can wire this up and we should still have a black background. Good. Okay, but now it looks, it just ruined everything. So let's adjust our bloom. Um, and I've talked about kind of my go-to bloom settings in some other tutorials, but uh, I'll just go over them again. First thing I do, unless I have a reason to have the ramp glow level on, I pull that down to zero. Reason being is it adds this entire extra channel of red, green, and blue to the glow, um, or if you connect something, say just the thing you're doing again, to the second input, then it will pull the colors in the ramp from that. And you can get some really kind of interesting sort of displacement effects by playing with that, which I love. I use that all the time. Um, but just for the sake of simplicity, let me, let me uh, disconnect that, and then we'll pull the ramp glow level down to nothing. Um, I like to pull the threshold all the way down so that the glow is applied to the entire image. Um, and then obviously it's, it's so intense right now that everything's turning white. So I need to pull that down. Yeah. And what I kind of like, let me change the color of the glow. Um, orange looks really good with this. Red looks really good with this, but just white looks really good with this. I mean, choose your colors. You can mess around with this to taste. These are just kind of my settings. Um, but if I have the threshold down and the intensity pretty low, and then you can kind of iterations, what, what these two, the blur and iterations do is it really just, it, it takes the glow and it makes it tighter on the bright areas of the image. It kind of makes it more shapely, if you will. If you have more blur and more iterations, your glow is going to be more diffuse. Um, but if you have settings about like this, what happens in your background, if you can, you can kind of see the difference between this one and this one, the white spots are just a little brighter. You get like a little more glow. Um, and then from there, you can do things like add in the second input on the ramp and start to see what happens when you crank the settings. Um, probably have to pull the glow level down pretty significantly there. So it's all right. Well, that didn't really work. It's just going crazy here, but I'll, I'll uh, disconnect that anyway. Um, the other thing to try with this is just mess with the order of this. Sometimes if you have uh, like a harsher black and white image, um, which I'll change the noise to here just for the sake of example, if I like have the exponent down here. Um, and I'm getting these harder edges on the RGBA delay, and I don't want that. I want kind of the softer look. Uh, what I can do is 
put bloom in front of the RGBA delay and that'll soften out some of the edges and give it more information to work with. So if we're going to go that route, we need to adjust our bloom a little bit. So if I let's pull that ramp down, oops. There we go. You can start to see it's still got the hard edges, but um, it's getting you're getting more subtle colors happening with the RGB delay. Um, and you can mess with all these settings just to see what you get. And then of course you can, you know, get creative with it. Duplicate the bloom, throw a second one after, see what happens. Add feedback into the mix. You can get some pretty interesting looks. Uh, sometimes I like to get looks where it's really blown out and glowing like this. That could be interesting. Um, but the main thing are just using these. Throwing them after a render network is cool. Throwing them in uh, just somewhere in a texture, pre or post feedback loops are cool. It's just one of my go-to tricks for making something look cool. In Touch Designer, that's it. See you at the next one.